Yalla. Yes, that's right, infidels. It's your Friday locker room. Better late than never. We're getting to it for your dinner review tonight, so you can check it out all weekend long. We also just dropped the impact attack with Hacker Humming and Big Ray a day early, so you guys got all the great listening you want to for this weekend on your drives, wherever you're going, keeping it real in your backyard, having a cocktail, just having a good time here at hackerhumming.podbean.com with all the Hameen army. So y'all, uh, and I remember back in the days when I was just a little Hameen, though, I looked up to my bigger bro begging if I could kick it, yo, when he would go out with girls and I could go tagging along, nagging if she had a sis, maybe we could mack at the baby hood rat. But I'm back with my big, my big brother right now, and that's Big Stevie Richards, Big Stevie Cool, the man himself, the veteran of the locker room. Glad to have you with me today, brother. Same here. I, I, you've been really grinding and burning midnight oil and everything. And this is the end of the podcast week, but we'll get through it together. It's it starts Tuesday night and yeah, kind of almost 24 hours a day, especially for you with the editing and then uploading and all that stuff. Yeah, it's been uh, pretty much seven in, seven in the morning to one one in the morning the next day, man. A lot of six hour sleep nights, so I should be jacked because other people can get jacked on one hour of sleep and, and make it though. So, uh, you know. Well, you still got to fly around the world. You haven't quite done. You haven't tired yourself out enough <laughs> no. to get lean. No, I do. I need to get on that five hour flight at night and that'll be, you know, get me to where I want to be in my workout sessions. But uh, glad to be here, man, uh, even though it's later afternoon and uh, I see people jumping on twitch.tv slash conspiracy horseman chat room, uh, jumping in, got the message. So uh, holler at you guys out there. Shout out to all the family. Uh, appreciate you. It's been a good week this week's Conspiracy Horseman. You brought on Raymond Wiley, an awesome guest. If you guys haven't checked that show out, please do. Uh, getting rave reviews on this week's Infinite Fringe as well. Talking about Kanye West and MK Ultra and all that. And as always, the locker rooms are just killing it all the way around. Also wanted to give a shout out to my man, OK Fabe, who uh, he was doing a show here with us, but uh, he's having to take some time off because he needs a time because he just got actually put on the fight app. So OK Fabe's getting his own show on there. Just wanted to give him uh, our brother props there for, for all he's done for us to give us great content too. And I told him doors open anytime you want to come back. You're, you're always welcome, man. Good for him. Congratulations. Yeah. That's awesome. What yeah. what what's it going to be? Another like one hour show like you did here? Yeah, I think so. Pretty similar to like a, a news and review show, you know. So pretty pretty over. Uh, Saltines or Citizen Saltine. Do I got new posters up? Now nah, this is um, Kelly Edwards uh, made this one over my shoulder. This mosaic. She makes some of these little beads, and actually, I will have new ones coming because uh, she's been making some awesome ones, even way bigger than this. Uh, and she's going to bring them to all bin on the 30th. So if you're looking for a piece that way, I can definitely put you in touch with Kelly Edwards. She's done a lot of memorial pieces for people. People who want their pets done and things like that. Very cool work where she grids out a picture and then uh, just goes through and meticulously p places all these little uh, plastic pieces and glues them all together and puts them all down. Just awesome stuff. And when you're close, uh, it doesn't look like it does as you see on camera right here, but you know, as a picture, it's pretty cool. And then the other one is the, uh, final night of two CW poster. Uh, but, uh, the studio, I think in the next couple months might be changing. I'm going to redo this whole room. So looking forward to it and getting the new pieces up, but you'll see those probably before I get the new room done. But Kelly Edwards, thanks a lot for everything. Uh, you know, providing me with just great fan artwork. I totally appreciate it. Well, yeah, I might have to get one of Odin. Yeah, one of absolutely. She can do an awesome she's, one, man. Yeah, just lots of orange. That's all she's going to do. <laughs> you don't even need to fill in the other eye. No. <laughs> Not if we get in profile. Um, but, yeah, man, uh, appreciate you. It's been, uh, it has been a hardcore week, and I'm headed up to Canada for Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So <laughs> more bumps than Hameen's taken in a while, and uh, we'll get on and uh, beat the shit out of these infidels before they can do it to me because I know they would. So. Uh, looking forward to going up there, working for three different companies, and I'll be back Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for the grind, and then uh, Friday you guys are coming down, and Saturday's all been. So super uh, super big 10-day run right here, to be honest with you. A lot coming down the wire. That'll be a grind right right within itself, Friday yeah. Friday morning until Sunday morning, running, running, running. It'll, yeah. it'll be good, though. We just shoot lots of footage, and uh, we've been talking uh, you know, behind the scenes about how to deliver – this documentary deliver the Georgia Guidestones one when I get all the content that's needed. Um, and we have considered uh, doing a Patreon and, and unlike any other one, meaning, you know, 
no no real tears or anything like that more of maybe a donation thing and you will you will get uh more for your money than other places get you you know what i mean and yeah. it's, it's just literally there's no paywall we'll never do a paywall we've had these discussions before i think i'm speaking for all of us right yeah no we'll never do a paywall on content or anything like that but we really do want to up our production up our uh, content delivery and the type of content we do uh, you know, we're not going to wait for History Channel or anybody else to do. We want to deliver these um, these important topics to everybody in a timely manner, the stuff that's interesting to us and presented as professionally as possible. Absolutely, I'm going to put these. Babies you have your reading glasses. I, I had to. Reading? That's my my eyes are my eyes are pretty rocked from editing late night, man. I, I guess sometimes I got to break. You want them CDs? Want CDs? Fucking nineteen dollar <laughs> ones. <laughs> oh. Nice. I look like that. I look like the fucking nerd, the the, the Poindexter emoji. These are, oh, these are basically just for driving. My God, your your name in Skype looks like it's a 478 font. There, that's it. Nice man. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll do our Dudley Boys impressions today, and uh, you know they're not using it right now, so we might as well. But yeah, I want to just say thanks for everybody uh, for uh, for another great week. Uh, somebody says Hamin takes no bumps, no sell till death, uh, heals over strong. I'm down with that. I'm, I'm gonna let you uh, contact all the promoters from now on, <laughs> let them know. Uh, but hopefully, uh, you know, a little stooge off too. We've been talking to Vince Russo uh, about possibly coming out to Rocky Mountain Pro uh, this summer. So looking forward to that as well. July is another big month, uh, Crossfire and Border Town Wrestling. So I'll be in Buffalo and Canada again and just doing it, man. And uh, appreciate all you guys' support and everything you, you help us out with. So like we said, no paywall, but uh, exclusive content. You know, I don't want to be one of those uh, companies – that give you something, get you hooked on it, and then uh, take it away and try and force your hand and uh, and burn our audience. That's not what I'm about. The right. content will be matched on Stevie Richards uh, Fitness on Patreon too, so the prices will be lower and the tiers will be lowering. Yeah, more affordable stuff and uh, same thing, downloadable content that people can keep. Cool stuff. Very cool. Well, let's get right to it, guys, because we are a little running a little late today, so I want to get to it. Still got a bunch to do before we hit the road. Um, let's see here. Uh, new teaser for Charlotte Flair, nude ESPN photo shoot, everything you need to know about Ronda Rousey's suspension. I watched the video and, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know what we need to know about it, but, uh, I was on with an impact attack with Ray and he talked about this a little bit, you know, and just how we're always in tune, you know, knowing what we know in this business. And I said, you know, if it was me, I don't know what they're doing. I would have the countdown 29 28 and they already kind of ruined it by showing her from having her in the dark match so it's not really a real suspension and uh you know sure as shit in this wwe video they do exactly that <laughs> with the countdown and all that kind of stuff and then they even show a bunch of uh, fan tweets of uh, their reaction as well so uh you know ronda coming in uh red hot this week really uh finally kind of seeing the ronda rousey i wish we'd seen from the jump instead of all the baby face fluff stuff where she is using all her skills to even judo throw a Kurt angle and then get pissed off when she got burned and, and making uh, the rest of the locker room weary of her. It absolutely should be. Yeah. A little bit too late. I mean, I'm sure they're going to get something out of it, but people remember they, they can't have an emotional connection or I, I, I thought before and I've said it, she should never, cut a promo she just come in and do the stuff she did on monday mm -hmm. stuff she did on even the match on sunday was a, was a really great match you know one of the more enjoyable women's matches they had on there and in a lot and i'm not a big fan of women's wrestling i'll admit it and i, and I liked watching that match and actually nia Jax looked like what she should have looked like all along right right yeah, as, as a killer, finally. Somebody in the chat room, uh, a, uh, Abe says, I'm pulling the uh, professor look for today's show. Well, uh, usually I don't wear them in class for some reason. Only computer. My eyes get worn out after <laughs> 12 hours of, of editing and recording. So sometimes I got to just to save them because uh, they'll be burning by the end of the night. Otherwise, I got them going to the movies with uh, wife 144 tonight. So definitely want to be able to see what, uh, what we're going for. So I'm going to see the new Jurassic Park tonight. 
Um, let's see. Charlotte comments on posing nude. As Charlotte Flair will be heavily featured in the 10th anniversary of ESPN's The Magazine Body Issue, which hits shelves Friday, July 29th. You can check out a sneak peek of the photo shoot in this link. This afternoon, the former women's champion posted on Twitter that her naked butt, in all its glory, sharing a message of polit- positivity that she loves who she is and what she looks like. And it's kind of like a silhouette of her body uh, with pretty straight hips um but she says my naked butt will be in espn body tennis you still insecure but proud of who i am and what i look like never let anyone tell you differently hashtag seriously it's my butt uh and you can see uh, a non-silhouette picture with an easy google search and a uh, front shot as well so uh probably not as posed uh, for espn photo shoot but uh plenty of pictures of uh, charlotte out there if you want to see more so is this woman's revolution over? <laughs> is that that's the that's it. I see it in your eyes as you're reading it. You're yeah. like woman's revolution. Yeah. Well, it's over and over in your mind. And I'm sure everybody <laughs> that's listening that has as, as uh, it's coming out. Respect me, respect my body, and respect my skill set. Now look at my vagina and my ass. It's really my ass, you guys. It's a ridiculous double standard. <clears throat> so hypocritical (laughs) like uh you know i want we want all the same respect but we still want to be uh, objectified sexual objects when it's to our advantage yeah yeah when it's to our advantage absolutely absolutely Let, let me let me break this down ever since the beginning and this is our conspiracy horseman segment which wrestling is one big conspiracy it seems yeah is this a paid advertising deal with espn because yeah. ESPN used to be so far above, like they're not, they don't need WWE. Like there's not any, you know, even though they're in a lot of trouble, they're they're getting like everybody's po- go, like jumping ship to Fox Sports One and mm-hmm. all this other stuff, and they're 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 losing money and firing employees, laying people off. They're still a Disney company, it's still making a lot of money. I just I just don't understand this WWE segment ever since Coach was there, and now all this stuff. It just looks like. I, coming from somebody who's reviewed tech stuff and reviews a lot of fitness stuff now, there's so many paid blog posts out there. There's so many paid reviews. This just this just reeks of just well, we'll buy a segment on your show and then you'll talk about our pay per views or talk <laughs> about our show and here, here muscle and fitness. When I was going to go on muscle and fitness and going up to them to try to at least get some kind of promotion for me as a fitness person, I was trying to do anything I could. My wife contacted the photographer who did a lot of their photo stuff and basically WWE pays for spots on there, which I have no doubt is extended to everything else. Like in anything, you know, for somebody being you, you, if you look at the magazines, what, what's a magazine that say you go to vitamin shop and you look at their magazine, they give mm-hmm. you for free. It's all advertisements, even though it's placed in the, in the, the veil of a story or an article or, or a research. And then the last page is the big full page. Like, you know, buy our, by our, you know, I don't know, lead paint flavored fucking free workout. <laughs> I don't know. But you see what I mean? Like, absolutely. Let's, it's Operation Mockingbird for fucking pro wrestling. And this week's locker room brought to you by 350daysthemovie.com. Uh, go to 350daysthemovie.com to see all about legends of wrestlers and, uh, being on the road and all they've gone through as well. 350daysthemovie.com. <laughs> Do you like that? At least we're up front about it. We're not even in documentary. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We're not. They, they got the old timers. We'll, we'll catch it on uh, maybe part two or three. They'll they'll come to us at that point. Do you, do you agree though? Do you I agree. agree I agree a hundred percent. I mean, that's the way the old man at seventy two years old is on the cover of Muscle and Fitness, gas to the gills with a goddamn three quarter inch chain around his neck. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I'd like to believe that he's just walking around uh, Titan towers like that shirtless with some dress pants on with a big chain. Like he's uh, Hercules Hernandez. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, no, they're paying, he's paying 10 grand to be a cover boy and just like the rest of them to, to push their product. But uh, when it comes to ESPN, I think it's spot on. They, their ratings were failing. They've gone to targeted marketing, targeted audience, and uh, that's where they're going to do it to generate revenue because they're losing revenue based on losing ratings, and that means they can't charge advertisers as much. So this is just the next level of the work to do it. So and, one more question about that. Yeah. Do you think the casual person, the casual sports fan, you know, because it's a visceral reaction from the MMA crowd, if they see someone like her in there and they're like, oh, God, a fake wrestler, oh, my God, like how far is this magazine phone or this company? Or in our fake wrestling segment, who wants to? 
I don't know. Well, I think they're too big of marks for when he comes on. Yeah, That's they're the probably one. too big of marks for Ric Flair to say shit about her. Is my guess. Good point. They just did the thirty or for thirty on mm-hmm. Flair, so yep. hopefully no. But at this point, finally, people don't try to emulate him in the business. Like, I've seen too many people, like, he's the best, and he's this and that. And like, give me a fucking break. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like everybody's afraid to, to address the elephant in the room that, like, you don't want to be like the dude. You don't want to be like him. And he, I think he even said in the 30 for 30, you know, he, does, he, he, he would not recommend you be like him. I don't think you can be in this day and age either. Like every the reason why he's so over in that respect is it's a nostalgia throwback to the wild west of uh, being able to slap asses and uh, call everybody sweetheart and do what you wanted to do back then and and now it's uh, that, that that shit would never fly. <laughs> Could you imagine? I was on the plane. I was on the plane ride. The plane ride from hell. I was right there. Yeah, for most of it. Yeah, the wait for the book. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal. Uh, you know, there's just uh, there's no way to get back to that. Like if AJ Styles was slapping chicks on the ass and doing that kind of shit, like walking around naked, it, it would not turn out the same. It would not be cute, <laughs> you know. So uh, you know, that's just the the difference. And then when it comes to Charlotte, she's gonna get the pass based on uh, lineage. So, and, uh, continue with Charlotte, Charlotte Flair undergoes successful surgery. When is she expected to return to the ring? As noted, WWE, uh, SmackDown star Charlotte Flair has been dealing with a ruptured breast implant since before WrestleMania 34. She's been holding out on having surgery to uh, correct the issue. Observer says Flair underwent surgery Tuesday of this week and the procedure was said to be a success. Well, I'd hope so. Botched. <laughs> You know, uh, it's kind of tough to botch that in 2018. As a result of the surgery, Flair will miss next month's Extreme Rules pay-per-view, but she's expected to return to WWE in time to begin her SummerSlam feud. Flair last come uh, competed in the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match, which was won by Alexa Bliss. As of now, it's unknown what WWE has plans for Flair and the SmackDown Women's title at SummerSlam. But as we noted on Thursday, the Raw side of the women's division is rumored to be featuring Ronda Rousey challenging Alexa Bliss for the title at the August pay-per-view. In other injury news, we reported today that Sami Zayn underwent shoulder surgery this week and is expected to undergo another surgery in the near future on the other shoulder. Zane's injuries and surgeries are expected to keep him out of the ring until 2019. Two bad shoulders? Yeah, well, uh, not enough Stevie Richards uh, fitness band workouts, in my opinion. I would I would definitely recommend him when he comes back he do he do mobility work on that every day and yeah. you know and start I don't know how much this guy works out I'm sure he works out but <laughs> to it no I'm not I mean, really sometimes I mean I don't know what to level what level he diets mm-hmm. and works out but yeah. he's really got to take care of his body now I mean now he's injured he's, he's you know now Double, for the rest yeah. of your life it's physical therapy above all else and your your shoulders are only one step up to your neck there's going to be a lot of radial pain and things going on and yeah. shoulders no dead it would it, was it a rotator cuff uh yeah double rotator so let's see he was in surgery for alabama he says well right now and i'm in birmingham alabama i just underwent surgery for my right shoulder aka my good shoulder so i'm out for a little while with that i guess people don't know about this injury i've been working with it for some time i don't know exactly where i when i tore it i think i tore it or initially injured it at the montreal live event how which is ironic because i injured my left shoulder now somewhat famously in montreal in my raw debut against john cena and a live event this past august wrestling jinder mahal i think i injured it then but then my shoulder, a.k.a. my bad shoulder, my left shoulder, a.k.a. my bad shoulder, started to act up again as well, Zane added. Then uh, that shouldn't, excuse me, that shoulder hasn't been quite the same since surgery anyway, so I had just kind of gotten used to the fact that the shoulder was the bad one. But it started to get progressively worse, so basically, long story short, it turns out I have two torn rotator cuffs. The left one and the right one are both torn. I just underwent surgery on the right one, and then in about six or seven weeks, I'll be undergoing surgery on the left one, and hopefully I can come back and be healthy and happy. And when he hopes to return, Zane noted, I'd have to be in the mix WrestleMania season. That's the most exciting time of the year for all of us. I think timeline-wise, I should be ready in time for WrestleMania, fingers crossed. Wow, that's a lot of that's a lot of pain to carry around for a very long time. It is, man, and uh, and and I gotta say, I didn't really see him, uh, you know, wincing or doing any of that kind of stuff. So he he worked it pretty well, or worked around it pretty well, you know. Yeah, and 
I would I would, that would suck to hate. I'd hate to wait six or seven weeks just to have another surgery. Oh. You know what I mean? Like just just I know you can't do them both at the same time, but do them do them both pretty close together. Right. Then, you know, because you're starting everything over again. You can't even yeah, strengthen I, anything. <laughs> I think it comes down to like, uh, can I wipe my own ass or can I not wipe my own ass at that point? You uh, know, just <laughs> so, going on a fast, going on like a nine month fast and lose weight. <laughs> So, uh, you know, that's that's pretty rough. Uh, not to say I'm a huge Sami Zayn fan or the programs I booked him in, but I'm definitely not a fan of anybody uh, being injured and having to have uh, major surgeries, let alone two, uh, that could be career-threatening, career, career uh, you know, possibly ending. And I think why take him off TV that whole time? His best stuff is when he's on the mic. Uh, there's, there's easily a place for him to be a manager or be a mouthpiece along those lines as, as soon as he can hold the mic and he doesn't have to take any bumps or anything along the, that way. Oh, man. I mean, you can milk this. Bobby Lashley injured both his shoulders in the match. Yeah. Now he needs and he can keep him on TV. He can have an official microphone holder, some NXT yeah. <laughs> kid. You know, just that's his microphone holder. Yep. Try to get that kid over a little bit. And Stephanie McMahon gives him a job somewhere. Phenomenal. To, to be, you know, to actually make him the GM and Kurt is assistant GM and has to hold the microphone for him. There'd be heat on that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and but... and they totally ignored the thing that, that Kurt had done by, you know, not giving, not wanting to give them jobs and tell them about TNA. Now it's kind of like comes back to bite him in the ass and, and uh, you know, get sympathy on Kurt. And let let Hain be a heel GM or is Hain whatever he should be, <laughs> Sammy Hain. I'm thinking of the Boner Champion. <laughs> but Sammy Zayn, they can go back to a heel GM. Sure. And yeah. then Kevin Owens gets fucking opportunity after opportunity. Dude, we just wrote this shit in three minutes. They yep. can't think of this. Nope. And I would do the big. Uh, I would start off with the big arms out double cast too. You know what I mean? Just to to make it that way. I'd even go as far to put him in the Mr. McMahon wheelchair, even though his yeah. legs are okay. <laughs> yeah, Kurt wheel him around. Might as well. Like, uh, yeah. Um, Bang Biscuit Drew in the chat room says, can he still drive a cab with two bad shoulders? That's a good question. Uh, I think he's going to have to get one of those self-driving cars and he'll just hang out in there. It's another answer. It's another question that won't be answered on TV. <laughs> <laughs> that was that. Yeah. Uh, continuing on the injury report, the latest on Randy Orton's injury status and who's headlining SmackDown Live again events this weekend in place of AJ Styles. Uh, as according to PW Insider, injured star Randy Orton has been spotted down in Birmingham, Alabama. Alabama getting all the uh, top stars this week, uh, which likely means he's being evaluated as he continues to rehab following surgery. As, no as noted, Orton went un underwent knee surgery back in mid-May, and while no timeline for his return was given following the procedure, the average rehab time for a surgically repaired meniscus is around three months, depending on the severity of the initial injury. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, uh, that that surgery's come a long way, too, in the last 15, 20 years, man, uh, of how they do it and uh, turn around. I mean, that used to be six months. Now it's three months. Um, we'll see. I mean, I, I would wait to do anything. I don't know if you really need them for SummerSlam. Um, by that time, you probably would be ready, though. So. Well, I can't push him. I guess they all learned the lesson from CM Punk and kept him going and going. And mm -hmm. every time he had surgery, brought him back after a week or two. Yeah. You know, they they they, they must have learned something from that from that lawsuit. Man, we can't have this. We really can't have this happen again. Yeah. We have to get get ahead of this. Yeah. There's uh there's too much risk and not enough reward there for a payoff of like uh, who if you're gonna buy SummerSlam or buy the network or even buy a ticket, it's not gonna be like oh I'm not going because Randy Orton's not there. So. <laughs> might as well let him heal and get the most out of him as you can going down the road. It says, who's headlining SmackDown events this weekend in place of AJ? Uh, as uh, they head down to Australia doing promotional work for the W. As, he, as AJ goes to Australia doing promotional work, excuse me, for the $1 trillion super show down in October, uh, as Vince would say. Uh, headlining this weekend's WWE live <laughs> events will be Jeff Hardy defending his U.S. title against Shinsuke Nakamura, The Miz, and Samoa Joe in a fatal four way matches. Oh, so it'll be all four of those. Uh, and WWE SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Bludgeon Brothers versus The Bar versus The New Day versus Rusev and Aiden English is also being advertised for this weekend's Blue Brand events. So 
some interesting matchups that way. I, I'm sure some of the little kids will be disappointed that they don't get to see AJ, but when you're the top guy, you're Mr. 2K19 video game, and uh, Australia's giving you a trillion dollars. You got to show up, baby. Ah, oh, fuck those kids. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. Always throw them down a well. There we go. Now, continue on uh, the injury report here. Conflicting info regarding William Regal's NXT status. As reported earlier today at F4W Online, NXT uh, GM William Regal reportedly returned to Thursday night's TV tapings at Full Sail. However, PW Insider is now reporting Regal was not brought in for the tapings, and the decision was made on Wednesday night to keep Regal off of the of the tapings. So some uh, conflicting things there. I'm just kind of glad Regal, uh, and it never really was said what it was that he was trying to get over. I think it was something internal, uh, organ related. Um, so uh, Brian Alvarez versus Mike Johnson in a big uh, stooge report throwdown right here. He had a he had a problem after the tour of India. When I was with the company, we all got sick going to India. But he had come back and had that heart condition or something. He had something. Remember where he couldn't wrestle mm-hmm. for years? Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe it's a leftover thing of that maybe never well quite be. the same uh yeah and because it, it looked like he lost a lot of weight quick too uh as noted wwe will be uh, holding tryouts this next weekend at the performance center in orlando want to uh, go want to go yeah uh i could make a call <laughs> uh as reporting the following names will be attending the tryouts and if we put our glasses on they probably wouldn't even know it was us <laughs> uh, uh, the the Northeast Independent Wrestler Max Caster I don't know if I've worked any shows with him or not 24 year old Duke University football player Shaquille Powell and 28 year old former NFL player Terrence T.J. Barnes are the notable names at the tryout in the Performance Center but I, I did talk to uh, some friends of mine there and uh, they said it's going to be big days like 12 to 16 hour days so they are gearing up for that wow I don't miss that week I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell the football guy, man, the football, we, we, I think, did we talk about this on last locker room or we, we off, no matter what? I, the NFL has a, has a great system for players to become coaches, for players to become broadcasters, radio broadcasters, commentators, any, there's, there's seems to be thousands of jobs that the NFL tries to kind of like move uh, current and, and foreign players over or retired players or guys that are having they, they seem to have a great system for that i wish wrestling would mimic that type of stuff we, sure. we were talking about that actually last week about how we could come in and do certain things or the that that the network could use this kind of content like the fitness content but i gotta give it to the nfl man it, 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 there's like gotta be hundreds of radio broadcasts i mean obviously there's more teams and more that you can do and even the cfl that you can go up there and have any kind of job where you don't have to perform as a player but wrestling needs to really step it up especially if wwe is going to have the uk brand if they're going to have the nxt brand if they're going to have all these different kinds of regions it would be good to to put wrestling and i'm not i'm not i'll send pop it on to saudi arabia i don't want to (laughs) go but uh, but i'm not saying for me i'm just saying that that you they have a really good way where you can always feel like you're still in the game and you can contribute and that your knowledge or your passion to it. I, I agree. Well, I think the biggest thing is uh, that they're getting max value out of a guy they built and put time into, even if it's in a secondary position from, you know, all right, he can't do it on the field anymore. We've, we've built these stars. Why would we just cast them off, you know, to see at this point? Like, and we got more to take their place. And I think you're spot on. And we talked about this uh, with with building the network up and just knocking off shows. Why they wouldn't do that, and why they wouldn't even have their own morning show. I mean, you could have an everyday like, you know, uh, Good Morning America type show if you wanted to. With with their, their, you know, there's just so much. Not only do they have a network. They're like they they think it's just for wrestling or like a little spin off comedy show or whatever. It could be almost T V too if they wanted it to be. You know? Like well, they can cover anything, anything they want. I mean it doesn't like you said, if you had good morning WWE it, it, you couldn't have people with different opinions for very long. No. Like that show Bring It to the Table or whatever didn't last very long because people were <laughs> shooting, right? Right. They were fucking shooting, so they didn't like that, just the talk and smack show started to get interesting with the Miz and Daniel Bryan and they mm-hmm. oh we got to I guarantee you 
It wasn't a budget thing. It was, well, we, this is not our fucking mission statement here. This is not yeah. WWE like like our what we're trying to put out that we can't control the flow of information. So I would think, and just another thing, why not? You, you can do football. You can talk about football players. You, you already know, like, the, 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 the NFL will give you stuff. ESPN will give you like replays and highlights and stuff to show do good morning football good morning yep. this good morning did they, and you have guys that are football football fans hockey fans baseball fans all these things you're right you could you could fill up 24 hours a day very easily with content live and recorded yep and people would you know be on replay alone would be tuning in just based on what they heard if they missed it and you fucking signed Pat McAfee. McAfee. Yeah. You can't do a football show with Pat, Pat Matt, McAfee until he's ready to become a wrestler, or if he can't, well, we got this spot for him, so he's good for now. Another Rip Rogers guy. <laughs> yeah. Rip Rogers. You, you get some old, old, get some old wrestlers like Rip. Yeah. On a fucking round table, not your not your your hand picked wrestling legends round table. Mm-hmm. Get Rip. Get Cornette. Get these, you know, and talk about the South. Talk about, the, but but Vince will never. There's no history in wrestling outside of WWE, even though they they air the UK stuff from a from a festival where it yeah. looks like an indie show. <laughs> well, Vince should tune in and he'll learn some things about it. That'd be a good time. Sure. Uh, <laughs> Vader's son thanks fans following the newest the news of the passing of WWE legend and WCW and. New, and Japan legend, uh, NWA legend. Uh, they just put WWE legend, though. Big Van Vader this weekend at the age of 63. Vader's son posted the following on Twitter. Thank you, fans, for their support. A nice picture of him and his dad. And it says, The amount of love that everyone has shown my family over this fast few, past few days cannot be put into words from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you. Tons of pro wrestling names. Superstars have been reacting this week of the news of Vader's passing, including including, uh, Brooke and Nick and Hulk Hogan. And you can read more from them at this link. But, uh, you know, I don't really care about Brooke and Nick Hogan. Um, But I know Bill Apter actually called Hulk Hogan to get uh, commentary there, so you can check that out at OneWrestling.com. Bill Apter's YouTube, I believe, uh, uh, Hogan's comments on the passing of uh, of Vader. You know, a, a, a big, big star, and I think the, you know, not to try and do a news bit on a guy's passing or anything like that but the fact that they missed out on hall of fame this year i just wonder what that heat is they knew he wasn't well with the heart stuff and uh it was pneumonia that eventually uh you know was uh his end and why they wouldn't uh bring him in with limited time to not have to do a posthumous humor what is it post uh hu- uh hu- oh shit um <laughs> yeah <laughs> after after death yeah after his death uh humorously uh humorously uh and uh you know it's uh it's sad that they that they wouldn't uh wouldn't swallow some pride and knew that that was going to happen and now it's got to be his son accepting uh the award which i'm sure they'll do next year which will make them look they'll, they might not do it next year because i think there might even be too much heat on them of why they didn't do it you know but the fans are going to go crazy either way of like, why, why didn't you? So, well, I mean, people, people have short term memories and people forget, yeah. you know, we can see the 24 hour news cycle and other things that are world changing that they, they ignore after, you know, a few days. I don't know. I mean, that's one of those things. I think it's pure speculation. You, you don't realize how serious it is until it happens. So maybe they thought when mm. he said, I have two years to live, like, okay, well, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe it'll be two, maybe it'll be five or six. Maybe they didn't even think about it. We can't accuse them either. We can't accuse them of anything but just neglect to do it. Like right. They're not purposely keeping them out. And if they are, because of some stupid heat with whoever, eh, I mean, that just proves once again their pettiness. Yeah, and uh, speaking of the pettiness, the other big story about the pettiness this week was uh, – the details uh, with WWE blocking Ring of Honor at MSG. So, as noted earlier in the week, the planned date in 2019 for ROH to make its Madison Square Garden debut is off after WWE intervened and put a stop to the deal, according to Observer. <clears throat> a source noted it, uh, all it took was one phone call from a high-level WWE official, not Vince McMahon, to put a stop to ROH MSG date. And now ROH 
will not be debuting at MSG anytime soon. The report furthers there was an agreement as to when ROH MSG event would take place, but no deal officially signed between ROH and MSG. Nevertheless, ROH's parent company, Sinclair, was said to be furious that MSG backed out on the deal, especially considering MSG was putting feelers out to book indie promotions because it felt like WWE had snubbed the venue by not running any events during WrestleMania 35 at week at the arena. As a result, MSG pulling out of ROH Day, ROH COO Jeff Koff noted legal proceedings are being explored, while ROH feeling that even though there was no actual deal signed, the nature of the MSG canceling is such a matter could equal a win for ROH in court. On the other side, MSG believes it had the legal right to cancel the ROH date because nothing official had been signed. Yeah, petty, small, and uh, business killing, especially after your (laughs) top stars are mainly ROH guys at this point that you've taken from Samoa Joe to CM Punk to uh, Underwear Boner Championship uh, Wrestling to uh, most of your NXT guys, you know, Riley Fish, uh, you know, you can go right down the line of everybody they've taken from there. So it's it's just crazy that they're going to try and cock block uh, ROH from getting a shine when what they – Ray brought this up. They should do – if ROH is doing the small room, WWE should run the big room and maybe somebody from WWE shows up on ROH on that thing there and in the main event or what have you, maybe there's a battle royal and some ROH guys crash it. Wouldn't that just set the sheets of flyer and, and, you know, we'd have something really to talk about there of like, holy cow, they're working together in a different way. Instead, it comes down to a high level exec makes a phone call because somebody's butthurt about it, that this is our territory. How dare they? They only get to run the Hammerstein ballroom which is my favorite venue in New York. <laughs> well, they upped the rent on the Hammerstein or over years, so it's not yeah. really uh, – it's probably right up there with the Garden now. They they know how popular their building is, and it's hard to load in and load out that building because you got to go up the stairs. And I, I can see why the, if the Garden was kind of relative in, in rent, it's an easier it's an easier logistic thing for, for ROH to do. Plus, it looks like – they're they're moving up and moving forward and Sinclair is the biggest mm-hmm. TV broadcasting company maybe in the world hundreds and hundreds of I mean they they are they're like the sleeper cell of broadcast broadcast entertainment they yeah. you never heard of them but they're big uh, and the guy's name's Joe Koff Vince Russo <laughs> <laughs> I will I want to say this oh, I, I I even in I think in Vince in his old age can't even be petty correctly like he used to be because i guessed in my mind and i never like verbalized it that they would wait till the day before to shut him down right or shut him down i have the fire marshal the old school way have the fire marshal or somebody shut them down right. so it's not <laughs> right. you know the old indie thing yep but i thought they would wait 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 and then fucking hurt them like right when they fly everybody in and really do them like you know but they I can't believe they even really did it because Sinclair has all these Fox affiliates and stuff like yeah. that, and they got the huge Fox deal next year. That's why I thought a small part of me thought maybe they'll just let it happen because this Fox deal is so huge. What do they give a fuck about a house show at MSG? Yeah, it, it, that's just like going back to some 80s shit. Like, this is ours. No one dare run here. No, when... but Vince, it is. Vince, yeah, I know. Vince, had, he doesn't have a lot of old school feelings anymore, it seems like, or a way to traditionally do business. Mm-hmm. But that garden is like the mecca to that family. His father, him, that's that's the one thing about tradition that Vince is very, but they didn't run, you, you assumed they would run WrestleMania there every 10 years, and they broke that at 30. You know, that would be a yeah. great tradition to run it there every 10 years at the garden. They probably could have kept a lot of good faith if they did that instead of going to New Orleans. Yeah. Now they're just now they're just kind of like kind of flip flopping around four different venues all the time. If you notice, just like SummerSlam is either in not even in the garden, it's in Brooklyn usually or LA. Right. See, this is this is a weird thing because Brooklyn has become kind of like their regular go to pay per view location, if I'm not mistaken. And they are snubbing the garden an awful lot over the past few years. Yeah, they want to have it have it both ways, right? We're not going to work there, but nobody else can either. 
you know, so if if I can't have this piece of cake, I'm gonna sneeze on it. And nobody else will eat it either. Well, Vince has become every ex girlfriend you and I have ever had. <laughs> That's a... <laughs> very too true, to be honest with I you. I don't want you, but God, well, who is she? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, so I, I it'll be interesting to see I, if there is a, a court case here. You want to talk about? Uh, somebody with a lot of power and as much lawyers as WWE has, Sinclair Broadcasting could be it. And I think that old school short sightedness might come to Burnham right here because uh, Fernham Burnham, because uh, it's uh, not a wise move when you're trying to move into the Fox property and you're just thinking about ROH as a singular company and they're not looking at uh, ROH is just the baby. It's the toddler and dad's got a, a lot to say, uh, you know, when it comes to protecting his kids. So uh, this could be the end instead of just doing good business for wrestling, man. Uh, yeah. Like do a, run a house show against them to rib them and then do something with a crossover to get people talking. And then everybody's going to look instead just small and petty. I'm texting Joe Coff. Okay. <laughs> I'm texting Jack Hoff. Jack, I need you. <laughs> Go get him, Joe. <laughs> Go send. Oh, All right. That's, we're live. Awesome. Uh, Tommy Dreamer, Hurricane Helms, and more set for Rocks Off Wrestling Boat during SummerSlam weekend. The Rocks Off Wrestling uh, Boat. The Rocks what? Off. <laughs> Wait, what? What? Hold on, these fucking press releases get more bizarre. What? What is this? Tommy Dreamer, Hurricane Helms, and more set for the Rocks Off Wrestling Boat during SummerSlam weekend. The Rocks Off Wrestling Boat. It's a history-making, record-breaking, first-time opportunity to meet and greet and wrestling stars, see the sights of New York City and New Jersey, and witness the mayhem as titans collide on a three-hour boat cruise. A three-hour tour. There are three decks to explore, which give you mind-blowing views of the Statue of Liberty, the Brooklyn Bridge, Freedom Tower, and the entire NYC and New Jersey skyline. It's not just a feast for the eyes, because along with this inc includes the views are the world-famous New York bagels and coffee. Plus, there are optional full-service bars, a delicious menu option from Sancho's Cantina. This is an extremely intimate event, and there are very... <laughs> Limited tickets available, and everyone is a VIP. Here's how it's going down. Deck one, before the boat leaves, get up close and personal with a talent at the VIP meet and greet. Sign and photo opportunity. Includes a complimentary autographed 8x10 and a complimentary photo opportunity with each of the featured wrestlers. Deck two, explore the wrestler's merchandise and enjoy the complimentary coffee and bagels. And deck three, the top rope of our lovely host boat, the Harbor Lights. <laughs> <laughs> is, fuck. <laughs> I knew it was coming. Three. I was like, yeah. fucking top mm -hmm. rope. Is where the in ring know. action will commence once we hit the waters of New Jersey. Witness a full wrestling show as you see the sights and enjoy the ride. There's also a super duper limited platinum package. More details below. Uh, Tommy Dreamer, the innovator of violence. I thought everybody was a VIP. <laughs> they what are. Okay. This is super duper limited platinum VIP. Oh. Uh, Tommy Dreamer, the innovator of violence and the ECW original is seen everywhere from House of Hardcore to WWE, Lucha Underground, Sirius XM, and Impact Wrestling these days and is one of the most beloved slash feared men in wrestling for a reason. Loved by fans, hated by his opponents, Tommy Dreamer is pro wrestling. Uh, so it goes in. So it, it just gives people's bios. Uh, so Helms is on there. Matt Stryker's on there. Bad Boy Joey Janela and Bad Girl Penelope Ford. And many more wrestlers to be announced soon. Body slams, bagels, brews, and views. Uh, the Super Platinum VIP package is 250 and that's ringside seat, uh, in which will be the only seats and otherwise standing room only wrestling event on the deck. A signed poster, an event T-shirt, and a photo inside the ring with the iconic skyline behind you. So, okay, um, <laughs> the, 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 really, I got to keep going. First of all, I, I got to keep going. This is also no, no. in there. Oh, it isn't over yet. <laughs> no, a photo of you inside the ring with the iconic <laughs> skyline behind you. Meet and greet with the ship's captain and a tour of the wheelhouse. A personalized bottle of champagne, an onboard gourmet lunch from Sancho's Cantina, a personalized shout out on an upcoming episode of the Kevin Gill show podcast, a random shoot interview DVD from the Kevin Gill personal collection and one slightly used luchador mask. <laughs> I'm going to follow up my text. Cough. <laughs> Don't Shit. ever 
<laughs> run a cruise. You're going to be like, what in the world is Steve texting you this stuff? Go get them. Don't run a cruise. It's like they all do they, like Ben Watt text. Yeah, I was going to say he's got again. Tourette's or something now from CT. Let's, um, <laughs> The, well, dude, that was form, that was the form, strongest right? copy I think I've ever read. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the Kevin Gill thing was where it kind of dipped a little bit. I like Kevin though, but uh, am I like mm. Kevin though? But now we're going to bury his whole fucking <laughs> the, the promotion. I uh, first of all, the heel conspiracy theorist smart ass wants to say you're not going to see the entire skyline of New York City. Yeah. So. Uh, there's a couple things missing. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> then the other part of me is just like. What isn't Kevin Gill like on the um, the Jericho network? Uh, I'm not sure him? what they switch. Yeah, I think he's not keeping it 100 with them, which I just did okay. a little. Uh, so sound is he kind of doing Jericho's thing with this cruise deal? I guess, but it's just three hours instead of whatever they're going well, for Abe, five days. Abe in the chat room said it best. He goes, "How the fuck am I going to do all that in three hours?" <laughs> uh, you're gonna. Well, it's a boat, so they're probably only going to have like what maybe 300 tickets to of what they can do there and then you'll go out sanchos means dirty fuck <laughs> doesn't or your side fuck that's what the sanchos means what what sanchos you can sanchos getting? cantina you're getting an exclusive meal from sanchos cantina dirty so you're fuck exclusive side fuck or dirty <laughs> fuck from his and there's no stevie richards i will i will i will go out on a limb to say you will not see stevie richards <laughs> on this I haven't been on a boat. Imagine, imagine <laughs> starts getting seasick and shit. like everybody gets uh, like this has choppy has waters food. and you're trying to go off the top rope. And and are are you, are there going to be matches? I, there was a lot there to digest. Yeah, that's the that's the top rope, Stevie. Weren't you paying attention when you go from first deck? You get on. You're going to get shuffled through. You'll get your picture. You'll get your eight by ten. Second deck, you're going up for lunch, and you'll have the merch table there so you can spend more money and get the merch. And then once everybody's full of dirty fucks, uh, you're going up to the top rope, and you get to uh, you get to have, uh, I don't sure who they got booked there, probably three matches, maybe four. I don't know. First of all, I, will, I won't be wrestling because I'll never go to the top rope. And second of all, <laughs> what what stupid indie workers do you think they're going to think we're way up on this boat? It doesn't seem that high. Let's do a superplex off the third fucking deck <laughs> into the water. And, uh, God, dude, am Joey I wrong? It's the, old, it's the old when you wrestle in the bar that has the pool, you do the cross body into the pool. Yeah. And this is like real life. Like you could <laughs> fucking break your neck doing this shit. You know, not to mention you can get in the under undertow under the fucking boat. I'm just giving you, you know, not things I hope will happen, but things I predict may they, happen. They, they are, it's on the table. Nothing's off the table after that copy. I want to read that press release <laughs> after that, after it happens. So you guys can get uh, get on the How much? rock and boat. Well, 250 for the uh, super pass there. Um, All I, right, who's the VIP? All right, it's a VIP, and then the, who's the the super duper fucking Sancho's people. <laughs> well, you get everything. The only thing that the Sancho's gets you, uh, the Sancho's platinum <laughs> package, is uh, that you get to go to the wheelhouse, meet the captain, you get some champagne, you get a ringside seat, uh, pr priority seating while everybody else is uh, standing room only, and uh, uh, the Kevin Gill swag and, and a slightly used lucha mask. Oh, I can't wait to see the picture of these fans with this this, this very distinguished captain of the boat. Like, yeah. he just comes in and sees these freaking cross-eyed wrestling fans coming up. To them. <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, Dreamer, Hurricane Helms, Matt Stryker, Joey Janela, and his girl, and then who knows? You know, uh, if I'm open, somebody holler. I me. I know, <laughs> I know. Maybe Papadon. Papadon's right there. Maybe he'll get on it and he'll he'll do the job to somebody. Oh yeah, I'm wrong. No, no. <laughs> Conspiracy horseman could do a live podcast, but we don't know what it, what deck we would be on and what part of the, <laughs> you know, VIP or super duper. Yeah, they, if you want to, you know, I mean, Papadon will probably do a Sancho's to get on the show. <laughs> Actually, we start talking 9-11. They put us on a tow-behind dinghy or something like that or put us out there with no oh, oars dude, or something. I, we would, too. <laughs> that would be exactly the time to do it. <laughs> oh, shit, man. That was fun. Uh, Velveteen Dream denies Hulk Hogan idea. Heavy machinery welcomes new baby and Nia Jax critical of Bliss's tattoo. 
As noted, WWE Hall of Fame pitched an idea where we'd see uh, WWE Hall of Famer pitched an idea where we'd see him manage the Velveteen Dream in NXT after Dream and Ricochet paid homage to Rock versus Hogan at Takeover in Chicago. But Dream does not seem to be interested in Hogan's managerial services, as seen below. Uh, Hogan hit him up and said, uh, "Yo, uh, brother, when Velveteen Mania hires me uh, as his manager, then we'll have the all gold Hollywood style, brother, Hollywood Hogan life." And then uh, Velveteen Dream put Hollywood Dream has a nice ring to it, but the Dream rides solo. Good try, Terry. <laughs> so calling him out his Christian name. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, I like I like what Velveteen's dream's doing, man. Uh, as many people as I, I said this on Impact Attack, as many people as I would find two to four grand for sh- their shitty use of uh, social media, I would actually bonus him a thousand dollars for burying Hogan uh, openly that way and, and getting himself over as a heel a little bit more. Yeah, I agree. I didn't think he was. I thought he was actually ribbing the smart marks with that outfit that he wore at TakeOver Chicago because um, Ricochet used to be Prince Puma. Yeah. So I th- that's what I thought it was. You thought it was Hogan uh, outfit? Well, he you... was doing the Hogan posing. Right. But I thought the actual outfit was the Prince Puma stuff. I think it is. I think it was not even remake. I think he just let him wear his shit. <laughs> so, you know, the, there was that. And then they did the face-off, which I was there for the Rock Hogan uh, face-off in Toronto. And I got to say... I've never felt anything like that at any sports event or any show I've ever worked. It was, uh, it was well, I'll, I will moment. interrupt you really quickly and yeah. tell you that DJ Hyde huh. from CZW says that he and I, I forget who it is, but it was really memorable. It was a Rock Hogan moment where they did the same thing and the people could not sit down afterwards. Possibly because they didn't rent any chairs for the show. That was my guess. <laughs> uh, you lost me after you said DJ Hyde. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he, I, he, well, look up DJ Hyde shoot interview. Rock Hogan. Yeah. Yeah, it might have to. It might be under Rock Hogan. Oh, I was. We, he was at two CW, and <laughs> he was trying to fucking swing dick with uh with uh, little Spike Dudley, and he's talking about just shoot headbutt me, bro, and all this shit. And Spike's like, "What the fuck are you talking about, bro?" Like, and he's just talking about all these people he worked with Spike, and Spike was just like looking at him. It, it's that's always been a good rib in two CW. Um, and he's a decent guy to talk to outside of actually yeah, the business. I, I haven't had okay. a problem. I, the business makes it, people just act act like fools sometimes. It does. And that was like everyone was standing around like, what is going on? And then Spike just kind of <laughs> hit into him. I've been on other shows with Hyde, no problem whatsoever. But uh, that that was a weird thing. So, But you're right, man. Sometimes people just uh, can't handle it and they have to act a fool like that. Um, Nia Jax critical of Bliss's tattoo the feud between Nia and Alexa Bliss was rekindled on WWE Raw this week with the two stars set to face each other for the Raw women's title at Extreme Rules Jax tweeted the following today criticizing Bliss's decision on her new tattoo for someone that doesn't care about what anyone thinks it's weird they have to go out and get a tattoo that says they're enough uh, I don't know if everyone saw that. Uh, Alexa Bliss it says, I am enough, uh, I think, on there. But she got it, like, written. I don't know if it's in that glow-in-the-dark ink, but it almost looks like a brand. So, you know, weird. And uh, Alexa's had documented issues with uh, bulimia or, you know, whatever, eating disorder type shit. So girls going to be girls. Get some dumb shit that they'll regret. Where is this tattoo at? I think it's on her ribs. Oh, I don't know, man. It used to be. I I don't know if they still do that. Like you have to clear it with the office before you get any kind of tattoo. I'm sure right. that wouldn't show if it's a glow in a dark deal. Yeah. But if you change anything about the way you look, like Paige was getting those tattoos way back, and that just ruins posters, video games, action figures. There's there's a whole investment mm-hmm. that's in there. I mean, it's it's still carny as fuck in a lot of ways. But the marketing department, the PR department, and the merchandising department are not carny. No. They, they do. They need things. They're very, very particular and detailed with what they want. And you know, might you might think, well, it's not such a big deal. But say, I mean, say <coughs> Rico- Ricochet gets rid of all his tattoos somehow, some way. Right. Now you have to change every poster. You have to change. You have to. That's the one thing that WWE, I think, is still kind of has where we need to stay up to date with our graphics and what we have. Not show, you know, not show what somebody looked like before they got the haircut thing. 
know, they really do pay attention to that. Yeah, you got to get all that stuff cleared. I'm not, I'm not sure on hers if it's anywhere where it'll show. And plus, it's that kind of nude color. But regardless, I bet uh, somebody might have heat on them if they did it without asking just because they want to be that big brother. Uh, last night, uh, seen at Lucha Underground, rapper Vanilla Ice was in attendance for last night's Lucha Underground show. So, uh, he's, uh, Lucha Underground tweets, you never know who's going to turn up at the temple. At Vanilla Ice was on hand for tonight's episode of Lucha El Rey. And also, uh, I think they're calling him Jack Strong, uh, but uh, Jack Swagger, Jake Hager, whatever you want to call him, uh, premiered on Lucha Underground too. So big names doing their thing there at Lucha Underground. And uh, if there was a problem, then I'll ice will solve it. Nice. Check out the hook. You, I thought you were going to do a Shania Twain quote again. <laughs> I'm yeah. off Shania. I'm off. It's a big vanilla ice day for me. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see here. Uh, we'll come back to that. Has Daniel Bryan signed a new WWE contract? Uh Prior to Thursday night SmackDown, or excuse me, NXT tapings a full sale university, a dark match saw Fabian Aker defeat Raul Mendoza. Okay. Uh, though that was a dark match result. Sorry. A uh, fan uh, on Twitter today asked Meltzer if Brian had signed a new contract with WWE given his current deal expires on September 1st. Hmm, all in. And Meltzer responded by saying no. As we noted yesterday, DB is being advertised for the big WWE Super Showdown pay-per-view in Australia taking place on October 6th, despite Brian not having yet committed to a new deal with the company. Smelter Seltzer speculates in the same tweet that he believes Brian will re-sign with the company. Um, so no to the first question. He says, I suppose it would be expected for him to sign, but the answer is that Meltzer does not know. Shocker. Uh, and then former TNA star Jesse Goddard will be special guest on today's new episode of The Talk, airing at 2 p.m. on CBS. And Jesse Goddard is also appearing on Lucha Underground as well. Um, DB at All In, September 1st? I don't know. I mean, they're, they're sure as hell putting them over on everybody and still pushing them. I mean, they, they're, they're not pushing them to the moon. I mean, he had, did the job in that gauntlet match. I don't know. You know, I, I don't know why people go to Meltzer to find out who signed contracts and stuff. Isn't that like <laughs> yeah, kind of strange? That is, man, that's just stupidity. And Well, that would that would make me think, too, that maybe they're just like, yeah, go out there and kill yourself. I mean, we're not going to resign you in September. You can do whatever the fuck it. you want. I mean, if he even makes it that far. You were on Twitter. I saw the thread going back and forth. Once yeah. again, I was like, I was like, oh, someone's interested in the resistance. Oh, no, they're not. Oh, look, maybe they want some <laughs> questions about the 12th. No, 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 that's not. And so I saw the thread where you were talking or why you were being tweeted and talked to yeah. about how, uh, you know, like what right did you have to, to even question the yeah. fact that he's uh, he's literally seems like he's trying to kill himself. Yeah. Yeah. What right do I have? I don't have any right. I have 12 years of experience and no fucking stupidity. And we just went through rock and rebel and, uh, we've been through Benoit and we've <laughs> seen what happens. And, and in the same breath, you just want to keep it going. Just want to keep on doing it. And, uh, and no one's going to step up and they're just going to let, you know, not protect the future. And, and who knows what the fuck's going to happen. And this guy could, he was already having blackout session seizures beforehand and now he's doing diving headbutts off the top rope he got power slammed on his head by joe there was another just wicked move where he got tossed you know and, and doing these dives and shit daniel bryan's a great worker why is he not working around things that would possibly re-injure his head and take him off the road to do that type of shit it, it is it's mind-boggling to me and it's frustrating when fans marks smarks whatever the fuck want to sling shit with me and, and be like, oh, well, who are you to say what someone can do with their body? I'm not. I'm, I'm someone who knows <laughs> what history is and where, know where you're coming from. And, uh, and, and also I'm in there doing it and have had my bell rung. And uh, you're just a fickle fan T-shirt buyer who really won't give a fuck about him at the end of the day except when something bad does happen and you can put your two cents in again and act like you're another, a smarmy dick who said, I told you so. Like, I just, I can't let that shit slide sometimes. I agree. I agree with that. You're a worker. First and foremost, we actually wrestled and we still continue to wrestle. And we know what it feels like being through injuries. And so when we speak about 
hey man, this is this is not good. I've I've been you know I've had so many injuries, much more than you and Daniel Bryan put together. Yeah, I know, and I and I hear all the stories about CT, and I hear about Vito talking about it, and you see what happened with Benoit, with Rock and Rebel, uh, many football players yep. that have had had this condition. You know, I'm talking to companies like Halo Neuroscience, which is up here on the feed, and trying to see if there's any benefit to their product to prevent or push the the symptoms down the road of something like that that, that might occur. It's interesting. Um, Sorry, just before you yeah, go on, go that a friend of mine who's a doctor and her brother's a doctor too, he was a football player for Brown, and he's developed a drink uh, a, a packet that I was going to actually talk to them about getting for us to test out that's supposed to be specifically for CTE and to help with that as well. So I'm not sure which way we'll go with that down the road, but that's something I, I almost forgot. I'd about. actually love to talk to them at length and put it up here if they would talk about that because that's sure. I can't even I can't even fathom that because CTE is something that cannot be even diagnosed till after your death after you're gone and and deceased. Mm-hmm. So I would wonder if they're taking chemicals from those tests. When they get the, you know, I would, I would like to see like what happens there. Um, you know, I've, I've changed my philosophy on a lot of things and you've seen me work. I don't work lazy. I don't no. work like, I don't work any less hard, even though the stuff I'm doing is a lot more psychology based and not trying to do like, you know, all these different, but, but when it's time to go, I can go. And if it's, if it's for the right person, but all that being said, even my training philosophy of the Rocky Rocky training montage and all these other things have changed over the past few months in the year. And Mm -hmm. the resistance man program is a, is another example of that. But this whole thing, and and there's a correlation of both this whole thing that no pain, no gain. And also I have to feel like I, I literally am breaking my body apart in order to get the benefit out of it. In other words, working out, you don't need to work out to failure all the time. You don't need to overtrain that much like that in order to uh, see benefit. And when you're in the wrestling ring, you don't have to leave the wrestling ring thinking that you left it all in there for the fans. Yeah, I hate no. that saying. That's the work. The It's a work. So you're not like an MMA fighter that comes out. MMA fighters that are really, really good never get touched. That's right. why they have longer careers. Guys Mike who can Tyson dip and dodge. Got, right. What's that? Guys who can dip and dodge and, and, and miss getting hit with a wrench or whatever, you know? Yeah. But the, the wrestlers that still work to this day, the, 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 the guys like the Bob, Bob Hollies and the Al Snows and everybody, they, they've wrestled very physical styles, <clears> but they also know how to work. And that's why they look the way they do in their fifties and the way they train. And you can say whatever you want about outside influences too, but you still, when you get in the ring, it doesn't matter what you're on. Yeah. You, you still, have to be able to work and your body, it still hurts and the travel and all you have to be smart. <sighs> and, and really, I guess that in the end, what I'm saying with what Daniel Bryan is you were so over as a character, people love you no matter what, they're not going to walk out of that building. All they got to do is point their fingers up in the air and scream. Yes, yes, yes. Get a couple things that you do and get the yes after you're done. That's it. That's it, man. I mean, you're not working your gimmick when you know already what is the biggest part of what they want to see. You're just doing these moves for what? Your own edification? Pretty much to prove that he can still go because people doubt him. Just like I had it in me up until like recently, like I had a chip on my shoulder that, you know, I got to still prove that I can go. I got to still prove this and that. And I'm like, Man, I, I want to prove that I can go till I'm 80 or 90 or 100, God God willing. You know what yeah. I mean? That's that's when I want to prove how I can go. Um, I knew when he when he gave up being GM and he wanted to be a full time wrestler again, that he was gonna he was gonna do stuff like this. When as a GM, he still could wrestle when he was featured on SummerSlam or Survivor Series or WrestleMania when the angle called for it, and then go back to being a GM and be he's way more over as an on-air character with that than he is now as just a wrestler. That's just yeah. my opinion. I agree. And uh, unfortunately, he doesn't – he obviously doesn't see it because and, – and it, it pisses me off uh, that those guys in the locker room, that a guy like Samoa Joe well, – I'm not pissed at him or, or, or Rusev – not Rusev faced him, but uh, Big E. Like, you know, when we were doing that match with FBI – and Mama Luke wanted me to do some stuff. We're in his hometown, and and his back is shot. 
And I told him, uh, you know, he's, he's definitely more over and more veteran than me. I had to look at me and I go, fuck, no, I'm not doing that stuff to you, bro. I'm not going to be the guy who puts you out forever. You know what I mean? And you're already, work, we can work a thousand different things to work around what it is. Why would I do something that could possibly put you on the shelf forever? I'm not going to take that chance. And for those, for those guys to do the same thing and they're on that level is crazy to me, man. It's absolutely nuts. Well, you know, it, let's look at it in our way. Mama Luke said all that. You protected him, and then he punched me in the face as hard as he could about seven <laughs> times. So, yeah, well, that, but that work, protected his back. back. Strength. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I was protecting him with my face. And then Guido tried to break my arm. Yeah, and then denied it. Yeah, and the guy was like, "Hey, man, you were you were really wrenching my arm." No, I wasn't. Yeah. Well, okay, <laughs> I was wrong. Sorry. This this. This numbness in my fingers is just, just from playing video games. Well, maybe you can check out uh, www.cover3, uh, C-O-V-E-R-T-H-R-E-E.com. That's the CTE drink mix uh, from uh, Dr. Garrett Wadowan and uh, I know his sister, Heather, pretty well. Uh, both, And she's a neuropathic uh, uh, doctor as well. Very smart people um, and uh, something I think we definitely should look into, but cover3.com. And he played for... Uh, Brown University, and I think he got his bell rung a couple times, man. Yeah, bell rung is not even a term anymore. It's a concussion. No, yeah. like, there's no mild concussions anymore. Yeah, there's no serious ones. They're all serious. It's yep. all one thing. Send Daniel Bryan 50 cases. Yeah, absolutely, right. Uh, hey, and I like you know one more thing. Go ahead. He can reach out to me. I I've always been very friendly with him, and and just like we talked about the Offspray kid. Reach mm-hmm. out to me because I am not saying this from a place of jealousy or hate sure. or bitterness or resentment. You do whatever you're doing. I'm going to do whatever I'm doing because I'm still 46 years old. And God, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful that I'm able to still wrestle and still look like a wrestler. So you keep doing it because I could be the dick and turn around. You keep killing yourself. I'll, I'll just have more bookings. Yeah, none I'm of this stuff is none of this stuff is out of malice or anything like that, dude. I want him to be able to remember his kid's graduation, <laughs> you know, not sitting there, uh, you know, eating soup with a straw, you know, like that's just uh, not what I want to see. And and for him to come back in this amount of time, and this even for them to book him in a gauntlet match, it's on like a, a SmackDown. rib. That gauntlet match was like a rib on him, isn't dude, it? it? It it's brutal to me to to think that no one has his best interest or that the star that he is where he wouldn't step up and just say, Hey, uh, this seems like a little too much. And then, you know, somebody call him power slam or he, he's the one who had to call diving headbutt. Why? Why? How, how are you? I know you're that great of a worker that you're at that level. There's no reason to be doing that, dude. There just isn't. Maybe Nikki, uh, Nikki's voice can snap him out of any kind of CT. Something can to make him remember. It puts me into some symptoms uh wwe creative writer who reportedly fired in connection with yet another reason big cast was released the firing of big cast has been the biggest story in wrestling since the news broke prior to wwe smackdown live this tuesday afternoon naturally there have been a ton of different stories reports flying around to get to the bottom of the breaking news situation so hopefully this can help start to piece things together as previously noted, it was Vince McMahon himself who called a meeting between him and Cass backstage and personally released the seven-foot superstar from his contract. There was an incident last month involving a little person and Cass going into business for himself that's been heavily reported on as the primary reason for his firing. But in reality, it was the culmination of a bunch of different factors that ultimately spelled the end of his WWE career. According to Observer, Cass losing in two back-to-back high-profile matches, both by submission to a much smaller wrestler, was in no way the original creative pr- plans for his program with Daniel Bryan. The changes were actually made as punishment in reaction to the little person incident, which means if that had been the only negative thing against him, the submission loss and money in the bank is likely uh, is likely the last we'd have heard about the situation. In addition, uh, it's being reported that a few weeks ago that Kevin Dunn asked for some time to go over a promo with Cass, which the wrestler allegedly blew off not only that but Cass then ran extra long when delivering an unrehearsed promo on live tv vince mcmahon apparently hated the segment so much that he fired fired the writer behind it 
So it was the culmination of the little person incident in addition to blowing off the well-respected executive atop, uh, on top of a personal behavioral issue on the recent European tour combined with a myriad of other issues, backstage heat, and damage done to WWE tour bus that worked together to get him fired. I heard he got locked in the bathroom and kicked the door out open, like kicked the door off the hinges. And uh, I also heard that that writer read on another sheet that the writer uh, blew off that session with Dunn too. So... Uh, yeah, uh, you think, as Rip Rogers would say, you think you're over, you ain't fucking over. <laughs> and, they'll, and they'll show you that quick. Yeah, Kevin's not usually that accessible, at least not when I was there. So I guess the whole culture has changed up there. Usually Kevin's the one that would kayfabe the boys and not yeah. have anything to do with them. There's so many there's so many buffers in place between him and Vince, and you know, that's what the writers are there for. Yeah. So it's pretty pretty odd. Man, it sounds like a lot of shit. He, I mean, everybody gives Enzo a lot of heat for being a backstage problem. I mean, uh, maybe both of them were. It just didn't look as yeah. bad because Enzo was so much more, oh, like, Flamboyant. I guess, louder yeah, about yeah. it. But the other guy's tall. <laughs> now, they, did, 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 now mm. when did they – this is what I mean. It was so terrible. Did they write it that terrible because they knew they were going to get rid of it? They set him up for failure? It could be. Uh, that's an awful. That's an yeah. awful lot of effort instead of making your product better. If he's no good, just get rid of him. If he's a problem, try to make your money with him, but don't put him in shitty angles where it's not going to draw anything. Yeah, I, I think uh, that they'll sacrifice the product to do a aha taught you or taught you a lesson thing that really doesn't teach anybody anything. It just makes them more pissed off and distrust you even more. You know, they'll sacrifice it. It's my sacrifice. You know that he, um, Enzo said he's he's asking for seven thousand a shot. Might as well. I mean, now Emma looks like a, a freaking you know <laughs> uh, a bargain. Yeah, and Emma, and uh, though if you were to book Emma and Enzo, it'd probably be the two worst matches on your card. Good stuff. Bret uh, <laughs> Hart comments on uh, his character in WWE. Uh, Hall of Famer Bret Hart, who's actually in 350 Days of the Movie dot com, uh, or 350 Days, you can go get your tickets for July 12th only. 350 Days of the Movie dot com. Bret Hart recently spoke to Sky Sports' new Lockup podcast about his career and touched on becoming a heel in WWE. I did very much worry about it, losing his fan base when turning heel. In fact, when Vince called me to tell me, he laughed and choked on the phone, and I said, I don't want to be heel. I don't want to be a bad guy. I very much took pride in being a worldwide hero, the same as John Cena today, but uh, the, same, the same as John Cena today, but just the same as John Cena. That didn't sense the audience was wanting something different something new vince realized i didn't want to turn and said give me five minutes and i'll talk you into it i said i'll give you five minutes and good luck he talked to me for less than five minutes and talked me into it pretty fast <laughs> so pretty uh over i liked heel brett i don't know i thought it was a good turn i liked uh i liked the feud between him and owen uh you know all that kind of stuff and then uh, the pissing on america the whole nine uh, I think it was. I think it was a good turn for him. I think it was too. I think that it was great to have the the, the U.S. versus Canada type thing. Mm -hmm. where Sean was a Sean was a baby face in America, but a heel in Canada. It was a pretty interesting time, and it was based on all real life growing heat between the two. It, it was right. really. There's not much of that anymore. Everybody's just kind of playing video games. I, I I'm really as much as a video game fan as I am. And it's just kind of like speaks on the, you know, the part where you would find them. Mm -hmm. They're putting up YouTube videos of like Miz and uh, the, the Kofi was in that match with him, right? And the Money in the Bank match and then in that gauntlet match. Right. Like these guys are working angles. Rusev's coming in and, you know, they're having matches. Him and whoever's having a match against New Day and, and they're shooting YouTube videos and them playing video games. And, the, it, and it's airing in like the same week or two. Right. It, I don't. I don't get no it. Heat. That, that, that little <laughs> stuff there just kind of, just if you're a heel, you're a heel, man. You know, don't do that. I mean, you said about Rusev dancing and mowing the lawn and doing that. Wearing kind of stuff. a clown it's, costume last week. I'm just like, bro. Well, well he's in that. He's in that um, Snickers commercial in the dollar. Now they're, they're working with Dollar Dollar General on ads. <laughs> it's like, I'm just laughing at some of these commercials. They are so corporate, so establishment. Yeah. It's just amazing. How far they've come. Or how far they've fallen, you mean. 
Yeah, no, that's right, too. <laughs> it, it, it makes me laugh, though, because if you really, really look at their writing, the writing is still based in the most the primal bullying, the, 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 oh, yeah. the, the, essence, the essence of, you know, shitty shitty people fucking throwing stuff out there for their own amusement mm -hmm. that's what it that's what it reeks of at least to me a lot of times like like the casting we're not going to do business but we're going to set him up to fail i'm not going to try to make money with this guy we're going to set him up to fail and then we're going to fire him and we're going to fire the writer and say it's their fault and then we're oh excuse me our hands are clean <laughs> yeah yep it's uh it's never on us it was always them and uh they were trying to sabotage in the beginning uh, and final news is that Chris Jericho claims that New Japan is breathing down WWE's neck. Uh, WWE legend, current New Japan IGWP, IWGP Intercontinental Champion Chris Jericho recently spoke with the Winnipeg Free Press on NJPW's growth. New Japan is a company that's slowly but surely increasing its worldwide popularity and basically breathing down the neck of WWE. It's a Japanese wrestling company and the top stars are Japanese, but they, they but there we were, two foreigners headlining the main event in Tokyo Dome. It would be like two Japanese football teams in the Super Bowl. That fact is, it's too, that and the fact it's two guys from Winnipeg is a really huge deal. I think uh, you might be overblowing that one a little bit until WWE can come in, uh, or excuse me, New Japan can come and run uh, a 14 state tour and sell out every every you know seat in the house and has uh, uh, American TV with pulling at least impact ratings. Uh, I don't think they're breathing down anybody's neck. They're pretty much a niche product. And uh, doing what they do, uh, but uh, I like that analogy of <laughs> two Japanese football teams. That's just funny to me. I'd like to see a big uh, Japanese football team with sumo wrestlers all as the front line. I think that'd be excellent. Uh, I'm with you. I <laughs> didn't think Cody didn't Cody tweet something about you know grow a set of balls or something to New Japan to run a, a multi state U.S. tour. I think so too, and I I liked Omega's shoot promos too, where as he got over that he buried the new Japan locker room because it's like they've tried with these guys and sure they're good players and they can, they can do what they do, but it takes the young bucks. It takes Kenny Omega. It takes the bullet club to really shine a spotlight on these guys. Not your, you couldn't do it with just your Japanese wrestlers alone. We're the real draw. And to have them in with the Japanese feel, I think that's the right combination for sure. Yeah, I don't think they're ready for that. I mean, unless unless Mark Cuban, because he he owns Access TV, and that's where right. a lot of their TV airs in the states. Unless he had, you know, just an in with something where, I mean, even if they ran a New Japan thing like be, before a Dallas Mavericks game in the building, sure, that would be like, you know, not your normal mascot going through a table at, at the fucking halftime or whatever. <laughs> right. That seems to happen an awful lot. <laughs> but does that, does that, yeah, I think New Japan, this, see, this is where a lot of companies, a lot of companies get into trouble because they try to grow too big too quick. So I wouldn't mm -hmm. say that what they're, they're making money. They're still, they're still almost filling up that dome. They're getting closer each time. Mm -hmm. They run tours in Japan. It's like us saying 2CW or, dynasty we're going to run we're going to run in japan for 14 days we could run 14 days here it'd still be tough to draw but we're familiar with the road we're familiar with the logistics we're from it doesn't you don't have to fly rings over and do all this right. stuff to get the look you know not to mention personnel and then most of your wrestlers are japanese so you got to fly them over rather than bringing over just americans once in a while for with a visa you know yep. there's a whole lot the a whole lot of money that goes into it I think they're smart because their pro their profit their profit margin is probably really good right now, and they can throw everything in pro wrestling tees in the states. And plus, it's plus it's more of um, it's it's cooler when it's an underground movement when it's a niche right. and not so easily accessible. Plus, if you come over here all the time, you could hurt their subscriptions for New Japan World. There's a lot of stuff that goes yeah. into it. No, I think you're spot on. I, he might just been uh, blowing some smoke for 
Winnipeg. Uh, I'm surprised he didn't mention the rock and the rock and boat tour. Uh, you know, as compared to the Jericho. I don't know who I'm surprised <laughs> and we haven't talked about it the whole time. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll need to do a follow up show on it, man. But uh, no, I think you're spot on with all that. Of them hitting the niche market is exactly where they are, and, and in that market, they are uh, doing great. Uh, for the pro wrestling tees, uh, you know, hardcore, stay up till two in the morning. I mean, no, no little kids uh, know who Okada is. <laughs> you know, they don't, unless you're a Japanese kid, I guess. But no American kids are like, oh yeah, I can't wait to see Okada in WWE. They don't know. So I give this, I give this uh, news story seven stars, by the way. You. Sweet. Uh, but yeah, man, that's uh, your pro wrestling dot com news bag Friday locker room for the day. Wrapping it up, uh, I wanted to thank uh, stagetimetrivia.com dot com. Use the code Hameen for ten percent off if you're uh, looking to get a good side hustle or a, a Sancho hustle, if you will. Uh, mm-hmm. You know that uh, that that's a good one to do. You can go out and have a good time at the bars, or, or if you got a, a cool place uh, for dinner that wants to do trivia night go to stagetimetrivia.com use the code hot and get 10 percent off and uh 350 days the movie.com july 12th premiering one night only for right now uh get your tickets over there at 350 days the movie.com and also thanks to can you handlebar.com for all the great beard products my beard's kind of scraggly right now i gotta go wash it before i take the old lady out tonight and uh put some oil in it but uh it's been a good week. I got to upload the Conspiracy Horseman while we're on the show. People are asking me, where's the locker and where's the horseman? So I got a lot a lot still to do and to edit this show and to get that out for everybody out there. So I appreciate your patience. Check out the Impact Attack with Big Ray and I. It was a fun day and one of the best impacts, I think, of 2018 uh, this week. It was really, really a good show top to bottom. So uh, a fun one to go around. Stevie, what's going on, man? Well, no, no boat tours, no three deck, <laughs> three deck, uh, you know, Sancho's activities going on. Uh, but we got 12 week resistance band training program. Once again, and it's not just on Tuesday. I got somebody posted in uh, the Facebook group today talking about how much weight they've lost slowly, but surely since January, I believe. And just, it's, it's amazing with the 12 week resistance band training program. It's very mm-hmm. inspiring. Um, Please go there. You know, I put a lot of research in there. There's a lot of iterations and generations and versions of it uh, that led to this one. And we're still going to improve it in the future. But this seems to be the sweet spot uh, in that. Go to StevieRichardsFitness.com. Uh, check it out. I'm going to add more testimonials and results before and after pictures up in the testimonial section probably over the weekend. Uh, also, we may put up a shoulder mobility video that's going to be very, very affordable in the store. Because I know shoulder day is universally the hardest day uh, and the hardest workout on the program, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, right, Ben? I actually like that one the best, man, but I got big shoulders. So I, for me – I mean, it's the most challenging Oh, one. yeah, it is yeah, definitely yeah. challenging. It's my favorite. At the, any core thing for me is always the hardest, man. Yeah. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going we're gonna to put that up to protect a few people and have them – you know, maybe maybe Sami Zayn will buy it. I mean, it's pretty affordable. Yeah. I have my, have my personal training services are still open to Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. I know you <laughs> pop for that. I know Vince loves it. He keeps telling you should train both of them, bro. <laughs> they could I'll, tra- I'll charge them a trillion dollars. It seems to be a very affordable price. Well, sometimes, I mean, I, I it's even, uh, you know, not to rip on my buddy Kev, but uh, he says he, he, when he's done with the show, much like you, he'd rather just go back to the hotel room and not worry about hanging out or doing that. And sometimes that getting out into the gym motivation is the hardest first step. So if they're going back to the hotel room, that's the best thing about SRF Fitness is you can do it right there in the privacy and you're not maybe being judged by your peers who are jacking three times the weight of what you can do at this time, you know. Yeah, and, and that goes out to anybody. If anybody wants help with anything, just email me, stevierichardsfitness at gmail.com, and, uh, you know, check out the program, check out the results. Um, lots of people posting publicly on Facebook with it, too. Um, on social media, I have at BWO Stevie on Twitter, at Stevie Richards on Instagram, and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's lots of free content that goes up there as far as workouts and stuff. And uh, like I said in the beginning, uh, patreon.com forward slash Stevie Richards. The tiers will be changing to make it more affordable than ever, and every cent of that goes back into audio, video equipment, gym equipment that you see behind me, everything that that I can pass along information uh, to everybody out there. 
Awesome, man. And uh, congrats to everybody out there who's doing it and getting excellent results and, and posting to that motivation. Really appreciate it. Hacker Hameen on Instagram, at bin underscore Hameen on Twitter. Get at me, you guys. Send me any info you want. Conspiracyhorseman at gmail.com. You're here at twitch.tv slash conspiracyhorseman getting the ultra kayfabe locker room episode. I appreciate you, big brother Stevie, for coming on uh, today and look forward to getting back together and having all the horsemen in one spot next week for our big show at all been all horsemen uh all dynasty pro wrestling next week 6 30 in rome new york infidels championship title tournament and you know the horsemen are bringing it back home we'll have all the gold the tag team titles the dynasty heavyweight championship anyone who gets in our way getting that five dollar face slap from all of us y'all uh, master shoot crews coming 2019 <laughs> <laughs> there we go